You know, over the last two days, we've heard a lot of talks about the health benefits of swimming, whether it be sport, lesson, wellness programming, or recreation usage. All of them are critical on having access, and we've just heard some talks about whether barriers to that access may be financial. But the reality is, without a facility, we don't have access. So my talk is on swimming pool design and flexibility of utilization. So my question is this. What is the definition of success for a swimming pool? It's been our experience, it really depends on who you ask. For example, if you ask the athlete, it may be to create an environment that allows them to do their lifetime best. This could be influenced by the awe of arriving on the world stage in a magnificent venue. It could also be the mental preparation that is created just adjacent to the pool space. In the end, the field of play allows them the ability not only to compete against today's competitors, but also the legacy of past champions. For the spectator, a great view and a comfortable experience is required to generate repeated visits and memorable games. This goes beyond the pool envelope and encompasses the arrival and departure and wayfinding, support facilities that may include security, ticket control, concourses, and support spaces. Now for the official. The official shares many of the same needs as the athlete and spectator regarding the venue space. However, they require unique spaces to perform at their best. How about the media? The media also requires unique requirements. Different media outlets have different physical requirements to be able to deliver the competitions to its audiences. In the end, the audience wants to participate as a valued member of the venue with the seamless incorporation of viewing the competition and the experience. What about the sponsor and partner? They also have critical components of success that the design solution must incorporate. These needs result in a wow experience with the sense of being special and being able to provide memorable experiences to their guests. A successful facility goes beyond the competitive event. Facility managers and operators will have their own definitions of success. They are looking for a design solution that provides dependability, reliable service during the meet, but also in the everyday activities of the facility. Lastly, meeting the definition of success for the community or host of the facility is critical to the creation and operation of the venue. These stakeholders don't measure success in a week-long meet, but over generations of use. The operations must be fiscally, programmatically, and economically sustainable. The definition of success goes beyond the facility and looks at the economic impact to the local economy or its presence on the world stage. So how do we get all these different stakeholders with different definitions of success on the same page? The key is accurate and timely information to make knowledgeable decisions on how to move forward. This starts at the idea phase and continues even after the facility is open and operating. So let's talk about the idea stage. Visioning, dreaming, and goal setting are important to explore every possibility. As more information becomes available, these aspirations will begin to align with reality. For example, is it your goal to be a world-class venue facility or is it to be your goal to be a world-class training facility that the athletes will then go and compete at other facilities? <clears throat> a business plan is an important tool. As, we start, as reality starts to take shape, it is not uncommon to develop multiple scenarios. The basic information that needs to be gathered during this process is who's going to use it, how are they going to use it, and when are they going to use it. For example, in the United States, it's not uncommon for us to sit down with a variety of swimming teams and ask each of them when they would like to use the pool. And they almost always come up, we want the first three hours right after, after school. So if we take that as our needs assessment, usually the result is we need three 50-meter pools between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the evening, and it will stand virtually empty the rest of the day. That may not meet the global definition of success. As we start this visioning process, it's not uncommon to have multiple options. For example, the dream concept often will make 
everybody happy except the person writing the check. Maybe it's more important to have the reality concept. The reality concept starts to prioritize the different amenities to come up with a holistic solution that's palatable for everyone. And then the last approach might be the fallback concept. And this is the least we're willing to accept and still go forward. So we have a wide spectrum to be able to study and make decisions as we take the path through the development. For each concept, a program of spaces is developed with preliminary development costs and operational costs. This process answers the how, the what, and when, and then outlines the financial requirements for creating and operating this space. In reality, it is often easier to get the development money than it is to get the next 50 years of operating money for the facility. So let's talk a little bit about fiscal sustainability. Traditionally, there are three types of approaches that we have found. The first is the subsidy model, and this has historically been the model that we've found throughout the world, and it still has a strong place in today's vocabulary. The subsidy model is when we're willing to use tax dollars or whoever the developer source of funds are to not only build the facility, but also operate the facility. The second approach is what I'll call the break-even model. The break-even model is where we're willing to use tax dollars to build the facility, but we expect the user fees to pay for the direct operating costs. And the last model is the positive cash flow model, where not only do we expect the operating revenues to pay the operating costs, but also contribute to capital costs. It's very unusual to find a swimming pool in the United States or anywhere throughout the world that pays 100% of its capital costs. There is also a misunderstanding when it comes to venue facilities and the impact of spectator events. For example, many people feel that the more spectators, the greater their opportunity is to break even and cover operating costs. The reality is, many times these spectator revenues go to the hosting facility or organization as opposed to uh, the actual facility itself. It goes to, so the facility is actually being rented by the host organization. So developing a site-specific business plan with all the information necessary to talk knowledgeably with political leadership and using that lobbying effort that was spoken of earlier is a requirement to gener generating the support and confidence to be able to move forward. So now that we have all the information of who, what, where, when, and how, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to deliver the experience. So for the athlete, delivering that sense of wow and walking into the venue facility to create that rush of energy and excitement of having arrived is important. The athlete also needs a fast pool. And these are the results of resistive forces experienced by the competitor during a race and the propulsive forces that the swimmer can generate. And the design solution can affect both of these. For the resistive forces, water depth, wave action, whether it be impacted by the gutter, or um, touch pads, the mechanical design system, all influence the field of play. I have often said that the definition of a fast pool is a Canadian lake at sunset, and we saw a photo of one earlier. It's just glass. And our job as designers is to return that pool to a glass-like state as quickly as possible to allow the athlete to perform at their best. The design, is also, the design also influenced propulsive forces. Water temperature and water quality can have a profound impact on the athlete's performance. FINA rules are very prescriptive on temperature and water quality requirements. The mechanical system must be able to meet and maintain these abilities in all types of conditions. The design must also provide good air and water quality. The sanitation process includes chemical reactions that require both of those components. Minimizing the disinfection byproducts depends on both water chemistry and air systems. Getting the right solution by incorporating water filtration, sanitation both primary and secondary, uh, and evacuating the disinfection products is critical to a lifetime of best performances for athletes. This recipe of success does not happen without careful planning and engineering. Now let's talk a little bit about the spectators. Spectators don't know about the details of a great facility, but they know when it's not delivered. <clears throat> Lines of sight, acoustics, glare, temperature, humidity levels, and a comfortable seat are all significantly important for the spectator. 
Getting it right will result in a careful, getting it right is the result of a carefully planned experience. Both the venue, supporting facilities such as food service, restrooms are critical uh, for the patron. This goes beyond the facility and talks about transportation systems, wayfinding, parking, and entering and exiting the facility. Officials are also sensitive to glare, temperature, humidity, lines of sight, but they also require unique elements. These may include deck spaces, clear traffic patterns, and adjacencies. Dedicated support facilities such as toilets, changing areas, hospitality. Now let's talk a little bit about the media. The design challenges for media are a balance of providing what is necessary today without investing in expectations for the future resulting in functional obsolescence. The decisions you make regarding your facility today are likely to last 50 to 100 years. The way technology is changing so quickly now, it's important that we create an envelope of which many things we may not even be able to define today can occur. Visual excitement is fostered by staging that can include framing the picture with spectators in the background, creating a visually appealing presentation, and the use of color. Staging also incorporates a little theater with exciting athlete entrances and the award stand presentations, providing that wow shot for that special moment. A dedicated interview space that is functional and accessible in a timely fashion is important to catch the excitement of the moment. Practical infrastructure design solutions to meet the media needs. These include, could include lighting catwalks for rigging, power, and access to outside support spaces. These types of infrastructural investments do not become functionally obsolete. Now let's talk about the corporate sponsor. They expect um, all the basics of the normal spectator, but with a sense of creating a unique experience. From a design perspective, this could take the form of a dedicated space that provides proximity to the action, views, hospitality, service, and egress and e uh, ingress. Now often the person that's overlooked the most is the facility operator or director. I, I believe that the facility operator is the most important person in the whole process. An outstanding facility operator can make a poor facility great, but a poor facility operator can make a great facility poor. And I know we all want to be associated with great facilities. They're going to be looking for a design and engineering solution that offers a function, that, ad, that functions adequately and that has important support spaces and all the different amenities that go along with it. Often the first, these are often the first to go when the budget becomes tight. Their goal as operators is to be able to provide an experience that meets and exceeds the expectations on a daily basis. This requires dependable equipment and controls, ease of maintainability, practical mechanical solutions, redundancy in systems, and effective staffing levels. Different areas of the world have different expectations with regard to risk management protocols and staffing. For example, in some places of the world, it is more economically viable to put a person in a position than to put an automatic control system in position. In the end, the design must be able to deliver a safe, wholesome experience for users to generate repeated visits for both the competitor, uh, competitors on a daily basis. For a venue facility to be successful, the design solution often goes beyond the competitive field of play and incor incorporates meeting the general aquatic needs of the community. Typically, this not, not only includes the athlete, but also includes the recreation user, lesson user, and fitness and therapy users. For each of these user groups, they have specific requirements, and they typically center around water depth and water temperature. The competitive swimmers and athletes, they're working out, so they're wanting cool, deep water to be fast water. However, the recreation user, lesson user, and fitness therapy users may require different water temperatures and different depths. For example, in the therapy world, an arthritis patient may prefer warmer water, while a multiple sclerosis patient may prefer cooler water. The key is the more user groups and constituencies that we're able to generate in the idea stage has a greater ability of the facility becoming a reality. By expanding the benefits beyond the athlete to the local community, i.e. life skills and the benefits of swimming, and creating an economic engine that is self-sustaining and positively impacts the econ economic environment to create a winning scenario for all involved. So the key for my presentation 
is there's no better time spent than in the early stages developing a common vision where we can get everybody speaking from the same sheet of music. And this dialogue and this process of interacting between all the stakeholders and user groups develops a mutual respect and allows us to create a common vision for success, ultimately resulting in the development of more aquatic facilities so we can have more of these type of experiences. Thank you.